folks, we are continuing week four. Uh, we started arrays, and now we're going to do the. We're going to talk about hash, and we're going to continue the class nodes, which uh, we have learned in the last video uh, somewhat about how to use it. So we, I have the class nodes in Pico right now, and we're going to continue uh, with hash. The hash data structure. The symbol preceding the hash is the percent sign. Now, instead of numbered indexes like the array to access the elements of a hash, we get to use words, and we call those keys. Below, the hash now has three hel three elements: one, two, and three, and they can be accessed with the keywords uh, one, two, three. And uh, here it is: the hash. Uh, designated with a percent sign in front to separate it from the scalars which use a dollar sign and the array which uses an add sign and we provided a list actually this is um, an initialization we initialize this hash in this case with a list since we it's surrounded by parentheses a list of three items and these are pairs this is the key and this is the data separated by these two symbols which uh, uh, are somewhat of an arrow. So key 1 is now associated with the number 1. We don't necessarily have to put single quotes around here, this is just a number, so we could just use the number. Um, 2, the key 2 is now associated with the data 2, and the key 3 is now associated with the value 3. We can print the hash and note that unfortunately we cannot print uh, the content of a, of a hash inside of double quotes like we can with the scalar and the array. So get used to separating uh, your data when you print a, uh, a hash following a string. So we're going to run this, uh, this segment so far. We're printing the hash and you're probably curious to see how does the hash print just quick and dirty without anything extra uh, besides naming the ver the variable itself. Whoops, clear? No, I don't want to clear. Here we go. Um, hash is, and there it is, 3, this is a key, and this is the value that was associated with it. Then it follows no spaces, another key, 1, and the data, no space, another key, and the data. Notice that those are not coming uh, they're not displayed in the order at which we created it and this is you'll have to expect that from a hash. A hash um, um, finds memories at random, not exactly random but there's an algorithm which helps the hash uh, find uh, areas in memory that are associated with the key so depending on the key it will take the characters in that key and uh, come up with a memory location so you never know uh, where that memory location is going to occur but you one thing you can be sure of it will not be consecutive uh, like like arrays will be um, and when it prints it just goes down the memory and prints them as they have been written um, next thing is to know how to assign a new element directly into uh, into an array that I'm um, into a hash which already exists and uh, this time we're going to create a new key the key is going to be 4 and we'll assign data to that memory location notice that a dollar sign now replaces the the percent for a hash it's like the same principle used for the array Perl makes the annoying, we call I call that, requirement to treat one element of an array or hash as a scalar. We can still recognize it though, that it's a hash and not a scalar because of the curly braces. That's the clue. Same thing with an array and square brackets. Perl 6, which is not here yet, however has fixed that distinction which causes countless error messages. Here we are. Uh, calling the hash with a dollar sign because it's one element we're dealing with here. The key is the string of characters 4 and we're assigning that memory location a value of 4. To 
To access the hash element, we use the key in braces. Same as above, note that a hash may be printed inside a double quote, not be printed inside a double quote. Uh, okay, we already talked about that. Print hash with key of four contains, comma, and here's the scalar of a, of a hash, the key, and that will give us the number four. And we also, since we added a new key, we're going to print the entire hash again to make sure that it works. Run. A hash with a key of four contains four. The key is now, I mean the hash is now three, one, two, and it put the four at the end. And just uh, by coincidence. Uh, here, <coughs> we're looking at assigning a hash to an array. And we can do the same thing. We can assign an array to a hash. Uh, very simple. Uh, and this is how it works. First, uh, this is new. Uh, this this uh, just assigning an empty list simply wipes out any content of an array, just in case it already contains something. Uh, now we take the hash, which still exists from above. It's got four keys, correct? And we're going to assign the content of this hash to the array. So how does that look like? What's going to happen, do you think? So we're going to print the test array is, and we're going to print the array, and we're going to see how uh, the hash has uh, transferred its information to an array. Um, let's see. Here's a new a new array. I mean a new hash, right? We have a we have an array test, but now we have a hash test. And Perl is okay. We can use the same name. They are different structures, therefore they will not conflict. Um, and now we take test, and uh, which is the array that we have just created from from the hash. And we're going to turn around and take that data and put it right back into another hash and see what that looks like. The test hash is, and we're going to print the content of the new, the new hash. As you can probably figure out, this will be identical to the original hash. So let's see how that works. Okay, so uh, the test array is now. Mind you, this is uh, this. These are individual item in the array. You see this. So, as we know, when we printed the hash by itself, the first key three came out, followed by this this key one, followed by two, and so forth. And it's the same thing that's happening to the to the array. But the key is going to end up in, in the the zero element. The data associated with this key is going to be in the first element and so forth. Every the key the, the pairs, the key, the value, the key, the pair, all of these are um, are sequentially placing themselves in the array. So now you turn around and you take this array and you assign it to a hash, well same thing will happen. The hash will take the first element as a key the second element will be a value for that key and we'll keep on going like this by pair key value key value and now the new hash is exactly the same thing uh, key value key value and since these keys map into the same memory location uh, we're going to get uh, a printout that's exactly the same as the original one Okay, let's go on. We can also sort hashes uh, either by keys or by values, which is helpful. Uh, here are printing hash sorted by values, and here's here's how to do it, folks. You just put the v the word values right in front of a hash, and this is a function, values of hash. If you just said printed values by hash, you would exactly only get 
the numerical values one, two, three, or probably well, in the same order that that we had up above. But as these values come down the pike, we are capturing those by the sort function. Uh, therefore, now the values will come in sorted. And we can do the same thing with keys. The, the term is keys in plural. This only going to pull out the keys of the hash, and then we uh, capture that uh, that list with a sort command, and we print that at the end of this of this prompt here. Good idea to check whether or not a key exists before initializing the values. Well, let's see. Uh, let's uh, exit here first and and, and 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 check that out. Hash sorted by values. There we go. One, two, three, four. Hash sorted by key. Four, one, two, three, two. Now this is interesting. The order was slightly different on the on the on this this. Oh well, I'm sorry. We sorted it. F O T N T, of course. Next, um, this is important, especially for the assignment that you're going to get. Uh, you can s tell, sometimes you need to know if a key had been defined, meaning uh, was a value associated with that key, or is the key 20, has it been, does it exist? Have we actually assigned a key in this hash of 20? And um, here we're going to say if defined hash 2, and we know that uh, we have created the key 2, and we also have associated a, a value with it, therefore it is defined. So this if st statement will go through and go ahead and print hash with key of 2 is defined indeed. Now, uh, 20, we have not defined this key. It does not even exist. So we, this is a, an exclamation mark. If not exists hash 20, then it will go ahead and print hash 20 does not exist. Okie doke. And there it is, hash with key of 2 is defined and hash 20 does not exist. Okay, remember these commands, they will come in handy. Uh, good idea to check whether or not, uh, okay, we've already covered that. Exit. Another example. Uh, the keys are now in array keys. Oh, yes, well this is just uh, rehashing, so to speak, uh, the function keys. And we can we just put the keys in an array, and we just print the array. That's that's uh, not too significant. The keys are now in the array three, one, two, four, and we could of course sort of that array. And uh, let's look at the syntax to cycle through each hash element, grabbing both the key and the value for each element. This is um, a little preview of the while statement. While we do this, the first thing we're taking array 3 and we're blanking it out, making sure there's nothing in it. And we're going to use the push function. And uh, yes, strange syntax, not really, but uh, here it is. We can use a function called each. Now, this function here is simply going to provide a list throw a lip on its left side here to this assignment here you see is going to take one pair of the hash at a time therefore the first time around in this while loop that each hash is going to uh, spew out one key and one value the first one that it finds in memory we capture uh, the key and the value in this list remember we talked about this this is a um, an important way to capture list data or from an array, but in this case, it's a list pro, uh, uh, produced from from this each function of the hash. We take the first key, the first value, we push, meaning at the end of array three, the key, 
and then we push uh, the value in the next in the next element and that's all the while loop will just keep on going as long as there are still some keys left some some pairs left in this hash and it will quit when it's finished then we can print array 3 and we'll print the hash and it should be pretty much the same as it was The array is 3, 1, and then you notice that this is exactly what we did. So this is a complicated way, okay, right now this while loop is a complicated way of doing simply this. Now which one would you prefer doing? Same thing. Okay, this is the end of the hash review. Thank you very much.